Good evening to all of our CJTR listeners. This is Miss Marilyn, and we are in the Music Spotlight, a show where we pay tribute to artists in the live music scene. We are very proud to be part of an independent community radio station in which our very own local artists are free to perform for us every style and every genre of music on CJTR 91.3 FM. Tonight, we have a very special guest artist for you. He became known across Canada as a political hero of the Saskatchewan First Nations people, only to experience a tragic personal fall from grace shortly after. Confronted with the derision of the people, we will talk about his lonely climb back up and how music and faith has been his strength. And now, for the moment of the show you've all been waiting for. Tonight, our show is about both light and darkness, about how a man's life can become visited by both. Though this is not the first time this story has been told in our show as we think back over the year, it is the first time that one man has created both destinies within his own life by his own hands. Our guest artist tonight is one whose name became recognized throughout Canada by the national political scene as being one of the country's finest First Nations advocates. Young and enthusiastic, an articulate and intelligent man, Driven by his hopes to see a better future for his people in the province in Saskatchewan, he gave selflessly of his time, his energy, his talents. Within a seemingly short span of time, he became the leader of the First Nations Party of Saskatchewan, meeting with his constituents, shaking hands with all levels of the government. He held a rare opportunity to make history for Saskatchewan. Then, a fall from grace. By his own actions, his own admission, his humanity caused his foot to stumble, and in full display and the derision of people across the country, he descended into a dark and decaying place. It is not our intent on this show to pursue the details of this story, as other radio stations have done, but do know this, that the appropriate punishment was meted out and our guest paid the high price of belonging to a society that has yet to fully comprehend our human nature, including our weaknesses, our darkness, and our failings. On our show, we will share with you how our guest artist began the long and oftentimes lonely climb back up to a place of respectability, if not from other people, then at the very least from his own self. Most of all, he will share with you how the powerful combination of faith and music became the key to gathering his strength towards his hope of becoming a man who could once again make his people proud and hopeful. To all of our listeners this evening, this is Miss Marilyn in the Music Spotlight inviting you to join me with our very special guest artist tonight, the former leader of the First Nations Party of Saskatchewan, Brendan Cross, right here on CJTR 91.3 FM. Bana, bana.
Brendan Cross has become both a renowned and controversial name that is recognizable to many from coast to coast spanning our great country of Canada. Former leader of the First Nations Party of Saskatchewan, tonight we shall present him in his solo form right here in our CJTR studio in Regina as we give him an opportunity to share the story of his victory, his struggles, his courage, faith and love for music. You won't want to miss this opportunity to hear a story that no other radio station will tell or can tell, for this is Community Radio, the voice of the people. So without further delay, we welcome Brendan Cross to our CJTR studio. Uh, bienvenue, Marilyn. Uh, merci beaucoup. Oh for my goodness, don't throw the thank French at me. Thank you so much for inviting me tonight, <laughs> Marilyn. Thank you. I uh, am so honored to have you here, and you're a very courageous, very impressive man. And this is um, wonderful. I've been looking forward to this interview for a long time. Oh, I have too. I have too. Thank you. Um, the first place I'd like to start is with your faith and how that ties into the music, because those two components have been your strength. Well, what I'd like to say about uh, my music and my faith is that uh, you are the light. What it means to me personally is uh, that people always need light in their life to see where they're going, to see where they want to go, and uh, darkness. You know, we can we can we can take full advantage of the darkness and have fun in the dark as well. But we always need light to show us where to go. And uh, with this recording, you are the light. It was actually recorded in 1998, ten years ago, and it's funny because uh, Kevin Kyle at uh, McNally's, he says it's a classic. And uh, of course, it was recorded uh, with Dan Silger on guitar. He's playing with McNally's Saturday night, tomorrow night. And uh, Paul Kenny was on drums. And uh, many of the songs that we did, Paul would do just live off the floor. First time he'd ever done it before. And we'll hear one of those songs tonight. Darcy Johnstone on bass and uh, Mike Sanders a former worship leader from Holy Trinity. Uh, he was playing the guitar and he taught me many of uh, my musical talents. And uh, who else? It was, it was mixed and mastered by Michelle Garrick at Grind in Pence. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about faith, I think, you know, there was something 10 years ago that told me that those songs had relevance in my life, even though at times they really didn't when I was young. But 10 years later, they have more relevance today to me when I hear them and uh, when I sing them than when I even recorded them first. And that's faith, something that you know already that hasn't yet happened. Someone said that when they listen to the CD, it brings out such emotion from them that it can bring them to tears. We have so many powerful performers, but also so much inner character coming through. Of all the names that you mentioned, what was it like performing and were there such an energy coming out? Well, I had jammed with uh, with Dan and with Paul and with some, with uh, obviously with Darcy and, and those band members for some time, just as friends. And that's the nice thing about Regina is it's a great it's a great community of highly talented musicians, and we've all known each other. We all know everything about everyone, and we have since we were teenagers. And uh, when we recorded that time, we walked into the recording studio. We said we're going to do seven songs, an hour per song. We'd record. We had practiced the night before for the first time and I said okay we got 60 minutes for each of these songs we just recorded them live and and there's that energy and and yeah um, w when I think specifically about Dan Silger as a friend of mine I think the wisdom that he shows now 10 years later uh, at that time we were just having fun we were rocking out rock and roll and now when I listen to those songs and I, and I think obviously about me playing them and I and I play them from time to time uh, at McNally's and other places around town uh, yeah, the emotion is there now that I'm wiser. I'm older. Maybe, maybe I'm not wiser. Wisers? No. But yeah, I'm older, and and that emotion it means more now. You've taken your faith very seriously, to the point of you've studied. Yes, I went Bible to Bible college. college for three years till I got kicked out. Got kicked out of high school too. <laughs> There's where the wisdom comes. <laughs> yeah, happens to all the good guys. What was it? Was there anything in what you were studying at the time that wasn't in sync with what you were believing in your heart? 
Oh, it was all, uh, well, it, I was learning things, I was thinking things, I was believing things, I was, but I didn't know that much. I was a young guy, and, uh, and that's the difference. That's what I think you know, the difference about faith and, and belief is. You can believe whatever you want. You can think whatever you want. But when there's something inside you, even if there's just one thing that you know, you know it. And, and there are a couple things that I think I know, and it's, it's brought me peace, and peace is one of them. I know peace at times. I know the Prince of Peace. That's excellent. Book smarts. Book smarts, and then yeah. You, you world can, smarts. Yeah, and, Life and, smarts. and there's so many contradictory things to believe, and maybe they're all true. That's the thing, you know. I'm bipolar, and that's, that's a large part of my life, is that, uh, you know, there are times that people might think I'm delusional, a bit strange, acting a bit weird, you know, a bit high-strung, uh, and yeah, that's true. But it, it, it brought me to think sometimes. There are times in, in one's mania that, that you think this crazy thought, like, wow, you know, when I'm going to grow up, I think I'm going to do this, or, or you meet someone and love at first sight or something like that. And it's the most bizarre, strange thought that you could put to the acid test and find as false, false, false. But it's true. And mm -hmm. years later, it turns out to be true. And what so do that, we most misunderstand about bipolar? Um, what, what is it you'd wish people would understand better about it that would make a difference? I wish people would understand that there's benefits to bipolar at times. Uh, there's, I, I feel uh, a great, um, I feel great acute hearing at times when I'm, when I'm bipolar. Uh, spiritually, of course, there's, there's that delusional aspect, but it's, it's a peacefulness. It's, it's positive at times. And, uh, and yeah, so all throughout history, there have been people with mental illness or, or with problems or, or emotional issues in their lives. And, from uh, all walks of life from and all, all of levels life at of all society. Times. Yeah, at all times and levels of society. And there might, there, well, yeah, there are benefits at times. Of course, at equal par, there's, there's, uh, there's mischief, there's, there's problems, there's, there's great uh, struggles that people can go through with mental illness of any sort. Even if, even if you just had a bad day or, uh, you know, you didn't get enough sleep or you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, there's, there's a benefit. Maybe, maybe you'll work extra hard. Maybe you'll, uh, maybe you'll just have one of those great days. But at the same time, on equal par, it's it's like a yin and yang. You got that that dark coming at the end of the day, and and maybe the night is specifically dark. Who knows? And it wasn't that long ago when we understood so little about any emotional or mental illness, and attributed it to forces that we couldn't explain. Now we understand so much more. Oh yes, when you believe in things that you don't understand, you know. Um, yeah, and, and all throughout history, you know, I was, like John Lennon was uh, manic depressive, which is bipolar. You know, Elton John at times has, there have been people all throughout history, well, Jim Carrey, uh, and, and uh, who else? Well, Robin Williams. And there have been times that you look at their behavior and you think, well, they make a million dollars for it. And uh, there are other times that, that uh, people will be right reserved. And, uh, and they, they struggle from mental illness too. And you'd think, you would never know. You would never know that that person in public that you saw the other day who is right reserved and, and perfect to a T might have a bad night when he gets home or when she gets home. It's similar to um, our understanding of, let's take something like dyslexia for instance. We didn't understand it for the longest time and people were thought to um, lack in intelligence if they had this condition. But now that we understand so much more about how the mind works, it's it's a common condition that a lot of people have, including people like Tom Cruise who openly talk about it and how um, successful he became through understanding it better and how to work with it. And by force of necessity, it made him more intelligent. When you have a problem like dyslexia or something, and any any problem in life, by force of necessity to solve that problem, you have to you have to overcome it. Sure, if you're a productive problem solver type of person. Yeah. You can actually find the way and lead others yeah. towards a solution. There was one time that someone t uh, was talking to me about, uh, you know, about, I guess, achievements, whether it was mine or theirs. And I said, you know, well, that's the, that's the sign of a true achievement. If you're, if you're having a competition to get up to the top of the mountain and the other guy's in a wheelchair and he beats you, whoa, <laughs> I think he tried harder than you did. <laughs> it happens all the time. Now, speaking of accomplishment, 
former leader of the First Nations Party of Saskatchewan. Incredible. Welcome back. This is Miss Marilyn in the Music Spotlight featuring the former leader of the First Nations Party of Saskatchewan, Brendan Cross, as our guest artist this evening. If you are just joining us during the first half of our show, we have enjoyed sharing with you Brendan's love of music and a story of determination, accomplishment, and faith. As promised, we will now continue with more music and conversation with Brendan Cross, where he will lead into the story of his str dark struggles and his climb to overcome. So, and without further delay, let's talk some more with Brendan. Brendan, you have experienced amazing accomplishment especially for a man so young, by becoming leader of the First Nations Party of Saskatchewan. That's a tremendous achievement. Yes, and it was a great honor at the time, too. And, and again, I want to say that when I was young, I didn't realize how, how, uh, how symbolically uh, of, of an honor it was. And now, now that I'm older, I look back at, at that time, and I think, wow, that was, it was a great time. It was fun. It was challenging. It was, it was terribly frustrating at times, too. But, uh, but I, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. It would have required so much of your time, so much of your energy, and so much um, diplomatic handling of large numbers of people coming from different um, perspectives. From the bottom to the top, from the bottom to the top. And I met a lot of people, and, and the challenge was that uh, because I was young and, and I hadn't seen a lot of the problems, I hadn't, I hadn't been exposed to a lot of that, I cared. I cared too much, actually. Uh, there were times that I'd cry. I was suicidal at times, even. Because you were so close to the situation. Yes. I couldn't, I couldn't escape it because these were people that I was becoming friends with. And, and to this day, I, I have a very eclectic crew of friends, eccentric but beautiful people, y yourself and, and everyone here included. And, uh, but at the, at the time, I was, I was a young man. I didn't really know how to handle it. And, and I found that I was, I, was, uh, I was acting out. I was being very strange. I was, I was getting into trouble with the law, uh, you know, indecent acts, indecencies in public and stuff like that. And of course, that was, that was a downfall that I had to take the fall. I Did it happen out of um, being so passionate? about the cause and so close to the people you were working on behalf of. What were some of the most pressing needs that you saw that the First Nations people Poverty. needed? Poverty. It broke my heart to see that people who had nothing would invite me into their homes and give me the food off of their uh, kitchen table and they were already sharing it with ten people. And, and I would think, wow, you know, and, and I could tell that, that there, was, there was not funds for everyone. I was also meeting people with with great funds, and and they too, uh, you know, we, we think about we think about the great uh, Fred Hill that we we heard about this week, and uh, and and there has to be a balance of 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 sharing money, sharing wealth, and and there's a difference between money and wealth. There's Not a lot of people who, who don't have any money, but they have great wealth of character, they have great wealth of spirit, and there's a lot of people with a lot of money that are living in poverty. In, in their own little way, but yeah, that was that was the hardest thing, and and uh, my issues, I, I was abusing myself, and it was it was because maybe maybe I was abused when I was younger. I know I was, but yeah, that's that's my own story, and uh, I would find that when I was in situations where I just was frustrated completely and I had no hope or I didn't think I had hope, I'd start abusing myself. Now I'm going to throw out a controversial question because this comes up. Um, when we discuss poverty and issues of abuse and the results of that and sometimes people are very flippant and they say why can't you just get over it? It takes time, it takes healing and that's the thing that what I, understood, what I understand is this you can't heal yourself if I was a doctor and all it took is doctor heal yourself I'd do it but it takes time and I will tell anyone, anyone right now who has issues that they feel that they have pain or hurt in their lives and they want it to be healed right now, you might have to wait, but it will be healed. And when it is healed, you'll think, whoa, I remember the pain, but it doesn't hurt. And that's what I think about my life sometimes with, with uh, my past and politically in the last 10 years. Yeah, I remember the pain. I remember it explicitly, but it doesn't hurt anymore. It doesn't hurt at all. 
when we talk about issues of abuse too how do you forgive that's part of healing but how do you do that uh, you have to make yourself do it you have to write it down on a piece of paper I forgive so and so for such and such even though I hate this person <laughs> I don't know and uh, and again maybe it takes time maybe you'll just be driving in your car one day five years later and you'll think about that person and a smile will come to your face and you'll think hey I've obviously forgiven this person Boy, and it wasn't that long ago when we had so many biases and prejudices because of the obvious effects of a person that has been abused it was very disturbing to people around them I know of a story where there's a graveyard not far out of Regina and uh, in that graveyard there's one boy who's buried outside of the graveyard because he suffered from mental abuse and physical abuse and emotional abuse and he was such a disturbing um, obvious evidence that there's a sickness in that home that they just when he died it was very tragic and the attitude was well, let's bury him outside the graveyard oh yeah and historic grievances like this uh, I, I think about the Prime Minister's apology Prime Minister had nothing to do with uh, with the abuses of the past but he gave that apology to to the people also in history that that were still living with with the scars of that that abuse he gave that apology so that they could hear it so that even years later when when uh, the evidence remains and and there's a little boy buried outside of the graveyard and the evidence remains maybe it even just takes someone anyone in the room or anyone in the vicinity just to say you know I'm sorry about this this shouldn't have happened and you hear that all the time in public I, I love hanging out in public and going to bars and stuff and it's like people sitting in the back smoking in the alley they'll all everyone knows everyone agrees and uh, yeah in the paper it's an issue but on the street we all know and it's just like yeah it, like this shouldn't have happened or man we're so sorry about that or get over this or whatever and uh, not said with derision said with emotion that's just tremendous hmm with that I'm overwhelmed with the story that we're sharing tonight with our listeners I am so glad that you have come here with such courage and truthfulness and openness I'm going to take a pause here because I am very overwhelmed and we're going to play another beautiful song of yours and this one is called Let It Rain and uh, another Dan Silger. Yes, Dan Silger's playing on this and uh, this song actually I wrote in a church all alone at a grand piano. I sat there for an hour and I wrote a song. This is an original. It well, is. Well, it's fantastic. Let It Rain by Brendan Cross on CJTR 91.3 FM and you let me run You watched me fall You let me think it was impossible You allowed the clouds You let it rain You know it hurt you knew I'd cry You knew I'd ask you for a reason why You allowed the clouds You let it rain How could you let it be? You knew I'd ask you 
joining us we are reaching the last portion of our show this evening our special guest has been Brendan Cross former leader of the First Nations Saskatchewan Heart for sorry First Nations Party of Saskatchewan I am overwhelmed we have had a wonderful amazing show Brendan Cross has, has shared with us his story of determination accomplishment and faith and we are going to continue um, leading towards the end of our program and we are going to um, continue into the from the light into the darkness with Brendan as he shares this part of his journey so Brendan we do don't need to get into details if you prefer not to but may we walk this path with you as oh yeah you went through your fall from grace oh yeah what happened at that point well, what happened was I was uh, I was getting increasingly bipolar without being diagnosed, and I was very uh, I was very depressed. I was very crazy. You can use that word. And I was well, I was taking my clothes off in public and doing really stupid things and offending a lot of people, scaring a lot of people, to be quite honest. And uh, and um, so I had a couple of those charges. I had a couple mischief charges. There were years went by, and I was still I was still just acting out. And um, you'll see that sometimes people people just act out at, at crazy times, and it's almost like they aren't acting like themselves. And I remember that uh, that helps me have great compassion for other people who I see who are acting very uncharacteristic of themselves, of their good self. And I'll say, you know, I I remember one time I was having a terrible time, and I I, I was yelling at some someone that I care about really really a lot, and I said, this isn't me. And uh, well, they weren't convinced. I think they took off, anyways. But uh, but that helps me when I see people who act uncharacteristic of their good self. I think you know this isn't really them. This is something inside of them, or this is some aspect of their personality that's just acting out. And I I can forgive 
but it's it's very sad it's very tragic when that happens and it happened to me a lot when i was younger it it broke my marriage into pieces it hurt my family it hurt the people who love me it hurt my friends it hurt myself above all the most and it hurt the people who were victimized by my crazy behaviors that's, thank you for, that's what happened for sharing those details i am overwhelmed by your honesty and your courage and i'm so glad that you have shared that with us tonight all the details you are very healed in many ways and to to be able to tell your story so many people are struggling with issues in private or in a secret way yeah in and a are secret afraid world to come out with it and talk to others so i think that by your telling the story tonight people will know how to begin the dialogue of these kinds of issues yeah. and the right steps to take well I always think when people uh, you know if if I have a friend who has you know a child you know ten years from now who's having terrible times maybe they could call me and say you know hey, Brennan you know what's it like in jail <laughs> you know like seriously you have to have a reference point for certain people in the community who have gone through terrible times or good times how how can we prepare this person for this or what do we do what do we do when such and such terrible thing happens and uh, and so I'm I'm a reference point for a couple things, and I have people in my life who are reference point for reference reference points for other things that I ask. Um, lots of times, whoa, this is I'm confused by this. Uh, can you can you give me some understanding or some advice? The healing that occurs when we share our stories and then reach out to each other, and then you see other people heal as well. What does that do for you? How is that? How is that a validation that this is what we need to do together as a community rather than judging each other? Well, yeah, we, there's a time to be judged. I think we judge ourselves, actually. Self-condemnation is the worst thing to deal with. But, yeah, when we all just want to see everybody happy. Think about that. You know, I've, I've known for a long time, there were people in my life, and uh, especially my sister and my mom, and uh, and my sister would say, I just want to see you happy. I just want to see you be my brother again. And if anyone can relate to the feeling of unconditional love, it's a mother. Yes, or a father, or or, a father. or, or even children with their parents. And uh, like Casey Stone has a song that children always love their parents. It's the truth. And, and that unconditional kids. love that even in the worst times. Uh, you know, I had I had people in my family, I had friends say, Brennan, like, you are nuts. We, like, we're hating you right now. We're, we don't like you, but we love you. And, and because we love you, we just want you to be happy. We just want you to get better. And I think that uh, when I look around our community and I see people, you know, that I knew who used to be sad or, and they're having a good day and maybe they're having a bad day the next day or maybe a good year or a bad year. When they're having a good year, I just think, man, yeah, I remember that person from high school, and wow, it's good to see them happy. It's just, good to see them happy today. Just like.